Um, so tell us about White Pearl. How did it start? And um, you know, yeah, what's sure. About? Um, so I started working on this play about two years ago uh, because I uh, that year two whitening cream ads went viral um, on YouTube. One was for a Chinese detergent um, where it featured like a a white skinned actress putting a black actor in a washing machine and then emerging as white. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, it's awful. It's yeah, egregious. So that year two of these whitening cream ads went viral. And what I found so interesting about um, the fact that there was this sort of global outrage about these ads is that I grew up watching them in the Philippines and in Thailand and in these countries where whitening cream is a huge industry. So I really wanted to examine why it was that in these sort of, like a world of global interconnectivity and like you know digital acceleration, you can't create these things in a national vacuum anymore. You actually have to sort of engage with a global discourse of race. So White Pearl really explores like how complicated that relationship actually is in Asia to skin whitening and, and whiteness generally. Yeah. yeah. And whitening creams, are they only for intimate, you know, is it, is it a general cream or is it more of a... I mean, it's sort of, um, it's actually kind of ubiquitous in beauty products in Asia. Yeah. I mean, it's it it's not just, uh, there, are, there are skin whitening creams, but also like whitening products in moisturizer in... Um, like body cream, so it's 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 by default. Yeah, by default, included, exactly. Yeah, right. Sort of the same way that in the West we have tanning agents in a lot of beauty products. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> there's the a play universe. in there for yeah. sure. Um, and so, how does how does work start for you? Are you starting with an, an image or with dialogue, or what's your sort of process on on this one? I think actually I start with themes. I start with mm -hmm. areas of interest. A lot of the time, I start with real events or with journalism. Um, because a lot of my work deals with issues of globalism and and so and global culture, so I, I tend to start there and then build the world of the play around that. Um, and then obviously this play has been through a pretty long development period. Um, I've been developing this play now for four years. Uh, no, sorry, two years. <laughs> Let me say that again. I've been developing this play for two years, um, and we did a development of it last year in November for Playwriting Australia. Um, so at each stage of the development, um, we've been sort of exploring different aspects of the play. Like the purpose of the first development was really to hone the sort of idiosyncratic um, speech of each of the individual characters because each character comes from a different country in Asia. Mm. So they have a very specific relationship to, uh, to English, to their own sort of like cultural identity. They have very different upbringings and mm. education. So getting in non-native English speaking actors to work on the play as well right. was really important. Yeah. Interesting. And has your interest in it changed, you know, because of these developments or since that, that initial kind of conception? Yeah, absolutely. I think that particularly the work that we've been doing is just trying to flesh out the world of the play, make it the sort of um, the most fast paced, like um, motorized muscular <laughs> version of the play. And, and yeah, the work that Courtney and I have been doing has re yeah, really been focused on that. For yeah, this fantastic. Year, yeah. What excites you most about the work, you know, given that it's going to be in front of an, an audience in some form to right. tomorrow? I mean, um, this play is a comedy. It's a black <laughs> comedy. Uh, it's, a, it's a vulgar black comedy. And it's a corporate drama at the same time. And so actually the thing that completes the play is the audience, mm -hmm. um, which is true, I think, of any comedy, that uh, it's going to be so exciting to get it on its feet in front of people. Mm. And there is the sort of iterative feedback loop that happens with the play and with the audience that as information is getting revealed, as things sort of spiral out of control, you can see the audience coming along mm. on that journey. Um, and so that's really amazing to watch. And and it's hard for me to do the kind of development that I need to do with the play without having that, yeah. Yeah, it ends up being sort of theoretical eventually, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and was it always a comedy? Is that is that something that you, a form that you kind of write in a lot or is it something you light out on just for this? Um, yeah, I think it was, it was always a comedy. I mean, the, the thing is that I, I just, because I'm sort of interested in the grimy underbelly of humanity, like when, <laughs> when I started writing this play, I knew that I didn't want to write plays about like charming characters who are essentially good. Like I really yeah. wanted to delve into this issue in a way that exposed, um, how these toxic narratives get mm. created. Um, and, and there, and you, ugliness in like human nature is funny. That's, yeah. that's just ultimately true. Like the reason that people laugh at black comedies 
is because they recognize something of themselves in the ugliness that's being portrayed. So yeah, I think yeah. it was always going to be a comedy. <laughs> and the benefits of this particular, or, the, or these sort of longer term or, yeah. or more involved processes? Um, I mean, I think actually even more important than that is having people who know the play really well. Like working with Courtney on two separate developments has been amazing because she not only understands the sort of intricacies of each of the beats in the play, but she understands like what I'm trying to do mm. um, and what I'm trying to do in each scene and what I'm trying to do politically. Um, and so having someone who really understands the, that aspect of the work is invaluable to yeah. the process and means that uh, we can quickly work out if something isn't working and why it isn't working yeah. in the room. Yeah. You're not starting from scratch exactly, each, yeah. each time. Yeah. And in terms of your sense, you mentioned sort of the, t the, the term Pan-Asian. Do you want, can you just unpack that a little bit? And, and do you kind of include Australia as, you know, in, in, a, in an, an Asian identity or as an Asian country? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I mean, what's, right, what's interesting about um, what we typically think of as uh, Asia or the Asian identity is that it's not static, it's only defined by what it's not. Um, and uh, there's a lot of discussion now about the Australasian region, whether or not we consider ourselves an Asian mm. nation. Um, and uh, I think the, the pushback against that or the hostility to the notion of Australia being an Asian nation is ultimately a colonial pushback, that mm. we still think of ourselves as a white settler nation, uh, even though our demographic makeup doesn't reflect yeah. that. Um, so I actually think doing this kind of work and showing the multiplicity of Asian identities would be a really great step to accepting that we actually are part of the Asian mm. region, um, or we, we share the same global space as a lot of these cultures. Yeah. Um, and they're every bit as fractious and uh, different and diverse as we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's really interesting. I suppose after Keating, we kind of made a, a shift away mm. from even talking about us as a, in relation to, to Asia or the region. And right. It's really interesting that maybe we're ready to come back or there are enough really interesting artists to make us have those right. conversations yeah. um, again. And of course, I mean, we're seeing the, the rise of sort of this, uh, the resurgence of like a trenchant nationalism in a lot of um, wh white settler nations. Um, and so I think it's gonna be a really interesting time for just even the ideal of globalism. Like, what does that look like now? Um, and can we use art to sort of get back to what we are originally driving for in terms of like the, act, the imperative to like have a global culture, which mm. is ultimately unavoidable. Like we're too connected now. Mm. We have to find a way to existing as a world culture. Yeah. yeah. And there is no magic utopia to it. You know, there is no magic right. time to return to. If only we could, you know, get back to the 50s or right. these other like... Exactly. Yeah, just when we were all ignoring the problems rather than, you know, they, didn't, they weren't magically not there. Right, exactly. And so do you feel that navigating, you know, you live in New York currently? Yeah. Do you feel that as an artist kind of navigating na national boundaries uh, in terms of making work in, in different countries? Yeah. What do you think the conversation is here versus the conversation you can have with work in, in New York? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's something that I grapple with on a daily basis as an artist of colour working in both countries, somebody who is half Thai, half Australian, ethnically, doesn't sound like either of those places. <laughs> um, because I exist uh, in a place of lim liminal cultural identity, uh, I feel compelled to explore it in my work. Mm. Um, and I also feel compelled to, to not give any, uh, to not be didactic about it. I actually think that the best thing that artists can do is create space for those dialogues mm. Um, and show that they they can exist in different countries um, with different implications, but be just as valuable. Like this play is set in Singapore, but it's had readings uh, in the US, here in London, and hopefully we'll eventually have one in Singapore. Um, and it means different things to people in all those places mm. because it's actually about so much more than uh, intercultural races. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's about um, beauty myths. It's about uh, toxic cultures. It's about corporate culture. Like, and so I think it, it can mean different things to different people. And yeah. that's the value of this kind of work. And it sounds like that's built fundamentally into the kind of the form of the piece yeah. as well.